Welcome back, listeners, to Sandman Stories Presents, a folklore podcast where I read you to sleep or until the next story. I'm your host, Dustin. Today we are back in the book of Filipino folklore, collected by Mabel Cook Cole. In the first story, a couple plants such amazing sugarcane that the daughter of the sun and the moon sends stars down to go get it, and ends up with a husband as well. In the second story, also from the Itneg people, a son is cast away from home, but makes a new home full of people by splitting up a golden betel nut. Okay, let's begin. The story of Gigioma, who lives above. One day, while Aponitalao sat weaving a basket under his house, he began to feel very hungry and longed for something sweet to chew. Then he remembered that his field was still unplanted. He called his wife, who was in the room above, and said, Come, Aponibolanayan, let us go to the field and plant some sugar cane. So Aponibolanayan came down out of the house with a bamboo tube, and while she went to the spring to fill it with water, Aponitalao made some cuttings, and they went together to the field, which was some distance from the house. Aponitalao loosened the earth with his long stick and set out the cuttings he had brought, while his wife sprinkled them with water from the bamboo tube. When they had filled the field, they returned home, happy to think of the splendid cane they should have. After seven days, Aponitala went back to the field to see if the plants had lived, and he found that the leaves were already long and pointed. This delighted him, and while he stood looking at it, he grew impatient and determined to use his magic power so that the cane would grow very fast. In five days, he again visited the field and found that the stalks were tall and ready to chew. He hurried home to tell Aponi Bolanayan how fast their plants had grown, and she was proud of her powerful husband. Now about this time, Gigioma, who was the daughter of Bagbagak, a big star, and Sinag, the moon, looked down from her home in the sky. And when she saw the tall sugar king growing below, she was seized with the desire to chew it. She called to her father, Bagbagak, and said, Oh, father, please send the stars down to the earth to get some of the sugar cane that I see, for I must have it to chew. So Bagbagak sent the stars down, and when they reached the bamboo fence that was around the field, they sprang over it, and each broke a stalk of the cane, and pulled some beans which Aponi Bolanayan had planted, and the stems of these beans were gold. Gigioma was delighted with the things the stars brought her. She cooked the beans with the golden stems, and spent long hours chewing the sweet cane. When all that the stars brought was gone, however, she grew restless and called to her father, the big star. Come, father, and go with me to the place where the sugar cane grows, for I want to see it now. Bagbagak called many stars to accompany him, and they all followed Gigioma to the place where the sugar cane grew. Some sat down on a bamboo fence, while others went to the middle of the field, and all ate as much as they wished. The day following this, Aponitalao said to his wife, Aponibolanayan, I am going to the field to see if the bamboo fence is strong, for the carabao will try to get in and eat our sugar cane. So he set out, and when he had reached the field, he began looking along the fence to see if it was strong. He kept finding the stalks that the stars had chewed, and he knew that someone had been there. He went into the middle of the field, and there on the ground was a piece of gold, and he said to himself, how strange is this? I believe some beautiful girl must have chewed my cane. I will watch tonight, and maybe she will return for more. As darkness came on, he had no thought of returning home, but made his meal of the sugar cane, and then hid in the tall grass near the field to wait. By and by dazzling lights blinded his eyes, and when he could see again, he was startled to find many stars falling from the sky, and soon he heard someone breaking the cane. Suddenly a star so large that it looked like a flame of fire fell into the field, and then a beautiful object near the fence took off her dress, which looked like a star, and she appeared like half the rainbow. Never had a pony to Lao seen such sights, and for a while he lay shaking with fear. What shall I do, he said to himself, if I do not frighten these companions of the beautiful girl, they may eat me. With a great effort, he jumped up and frightened the stars till they all flew up, and when the pretty girl came looking for her dress, she found a pony to Lao sitting on it. 
You must forgive us, she said, for your sugar cane is very sweet, and we wanted some to chew. You are welcome to the sugar cane, answered a pony to Lao, but now we must tell our names, according to our custom, for it is bad for us to talk until we know each other's names. Then he gave her some betel nut, and they chewed together, and he said, Now it is our custom to tell our names. Yes, she said, but you tell first. My name is Aponi Talao, and I am the husband of Aponi Bolanayan. I am Gigioma, the daughter of Bagbagak, and Sinag, up in the air, said the girl. And now, Aponi Talao, even though you have a wife, I am going to take you up to the sky, for I wish to marry you. If you are not willing to go, I shall call my companion stars to eat you. A pony to Lao shook with fear, for he knew now that the woman was a spirit, and he dared not refuse. He promised to go with her. Soon after that the stars dropped the basket that Gigioma had ordered them to make, and a pony to Lao stepped in with the lovely star, and was drawn quickly through the air up into the sky. They were met on their travel by a giant star, whom Gigioma introduced as her father and he told Aponi Talao that he had acted wisely in coming, for if he had objected, the other stars would have eaten him. After Aponi Talao had lived with the stars some time, Gigioma asked him to prick between her last two fingers, and as he did so, a beautiful baby boy popped out. They named him Takyayen, and he grew up very fast and strong. All this time Aponi Talao had never forgotten Aponi Bolanayan, who, he knew, was searching for him on the earth but he had been afraid to mention her to the stars. When the boy was three months old, however, he ventured to tell Gikioma of his wish to return to the earth. At first she would not listen to him, but he pleaded so hard that at last she consented to let him go for one moon. If he did not return at the end of that time, she said, she would send the stars to eat him. Then she called for the basket again, and they were lowered to the earth. There, Aponitalao got out, but Gigioma and the baby returned to the sky. Aponibol and Ion was filled with joy at the sight of her husband once more, for she had believed him dead, and she was very thin from not eating while he was away. Never did she tire of listening to his stories of his life among the stars, and so happy was she to have him again that when the time came for him to leave, she refused to let him go. That night many stars came to the house. Some stood in the windows, while others stayed outside by the walls and they were so bright that the house appeared to be on fire. Aponi Talao was greatly frightened, and he cried out to his wife, You have done wrong to keep me when I should have gone. I feared that the stars would eat me if I did not obey their command, and now they have come. Hide me, or they will get me. But before Aponi Bolanayan could answer, Bagbagak himself called out, Do not hide from us, Aponi Talao, for we know that you are in the corner of the house. Come out, or we shall eat you. Trembling with fear, Aponi Talao appeared, and when the stars asked him if he was willing to go with them, he dared not refuse. Now Gigioma had grown very fond of Aponi Talao, and she had commanded the stars not to harm him if he was willing to return to her. So when he gave his consent, they put him in the basket and flew away with him, leaving Aponi Bolanayan very sad and lonely. After that, Aponi Talao made many trips to earth, but at Gigioma's command, he always returned to the sky to spend part of the time with her. One day, when Takayen was a little boy, Aponi Talao took him down to the earth to see his half-brother, Kanag. The world was full of wonders to a boy from the sky, and he wanted to stay there always. But after some time, while he and Kanag were playing out in the yard, big drops of water began to fall on them. Kanag ran to his mother and cried, Oh, mother, it is raining! and the sun is shining brightly. But Aponi Talao, looking out, said, No, they are the tears of Gigioma, for she sees her son down below, and she weeps for him. Then he took Takayen back to his mother in the sky, and she was happy again. After that, Takayen was always glad when he was allowed to visit the earth, but each time, when his mother's tears began to fall, he returned to her. When he was old enough, Aponi Talao selected a wife for him, and after that, Takayen always lived on earth, but Gigioma stayed in the sky. The End
and story number two, the story of Dumalawi. A pony Talao and a pony Bolanayan had a son whose name was Dumalawi. When the son had become a young man, his father one day was very angry with him and tried to think of some way in which to destroy him. The next morning he said to Dumalawi, Son, sharpen your knife. We will go to the forest to cut some bamboo. So Dumalawi sharpened his knife and went with his father to the place where the bamboo grew, and they cut many sticks and sharpened them like spears at the end. Dumalawi wondered why they made them thus, but when they had finished, Aponi Talao said, Now, son, you throw them at me, so that we can see which of us is braver. No, father, answered Dumalawi, you throw first if you want to kill me. So Aponi Talao threw the bamboo sticks one by one at his son, but he could not hit him. Then it was the son's turn to throw, but he said, No, I cannot. You are my father, and I do not want to kill you. So they went home, but Tumalawi was very sorrowful, for he knew now that his father wanted to destroy him. When his mother called him to dinner, he could not eat. Although he had been unsuccessful in his first attempt, Aponi Talao did not give up the idea of getting rid of his son. And the next day he said, Come, Dumalawi, we will go to our little house in the field and repair it, so that it will be the protection when the rainy season sets in. The father and son went together into the field, and when they had reached the little house, a pony Talao, pointing to a certain spot in the ground, said, Dig there, and you will find a jar of basi, which I buried when I was a boy. It will be very good to drink now. Dumalawi dug up the jar, and they tasted the wine and it was so pleasing to them that they drank three coconut shells full, and Dumalawi became drunk. While his son lay asleep on the ground, Pony Talao decided that this was a good time to destroy him, so he used his magical power, and there arose a great storm which picked up Dumalawi in his sleep and carried him far away, and the father went home alone. Now when Dumalawi awoke, he was in the middle of a field so wide that whichever way he looked, he could not see the end. There were neither trees nor houses in the field, and no living thing except himself, and he felt great loneliness. By and by he used his magical power, and many betel nuts grew in the field, and when they bore fruit it was covered with gold. This is good, said Dumalawi, for I will scatter these betel nuts, and they shall become people who will be my neighbors. So in the middle of the night he cut the gold-covered betel nuts into many small pieces, which he scattered in all directions. And in the early morning, when he awoke, he heard many people talking around the house, and many roosters crowed. Then Dumalawi knew that he had companions. And upon going out, he walked about where the people were warming themselves by fires in their yards, and he visited them all. In one yard was a beautiful maiden, the Pilisan. And after Dumalawi had talked with her and her parents, he went on to other yards, but she was always in his thoughts. As soon as he had visited all the people, he returned to the house of Dapilasan and asked her parents if he might marry her. They were unwilling at first, for they feared the parents of Dumalawi might not like it. But after he explained that his father and mother did not want him, they gave him their consent, and Dapilasan became his bride. Soon after the marriage, they decided to perform the ceremony for the spirits. So Dapilasan sent for betel nuts, which were covered with gold, and when they were brought to her, she said, you betel nuts that are covered with gold, come here and oil yourselves, and go and invite all the people in the world to come to our ceremony. So the betel nuts oiled themselves and went to invite the people in the different towns. Soon after this, a pony Bolanayan, the mother of Dumalawi, sat alone in her house, still mourning the loss of her son, when suddenly she was seized with a desire to chew betel nut. What ails me, she said to herself. Why do I want to chew? I had not intended to eat anything while Dumalawi was away. So saying, she took down her basket that hung on the wall, and saw in it a betel nut covered with gold. And when she was about to cut it, it said, Do not cut me, for I have come to invite you to the ceremony which Dumalawi and his wife are to make. A pony bull and iron was very happy, for she knew now that her son still lived, and she told all the people to wash their hair and prepare to go to the right. So they washed their clothes and their hair and started for the home of Dumalawi, and Aponi Talao, the father of the boy, followed, but he looked like a crazy man. When the people reached the river near the town, Dumalawi sent alligators to take them across. 
But when Oponitalao got on the alligator's back, it dove, and he was thrown back upon the bank of the river. All the others were carried safely over, and Oponitalao, who was left on the bank alone, shouted as if crazy until Dumalawi sent another alligator to carry him across. Then Dumalawi had food brought, and Tepilasan passed Basi in a little jar that looked like a fist, and though each guest drank a cupful of the sweet wine, the little jar was still a third full. After they had eaten and drunk, a pony bull and iron spoke, and, telling all the people she was glad to have Tepilasan for a daughter-in-law, added, Now we are going to pay the marriage price according to our custom. We shall fill the spirit house nine times with different kinds of jars. Then she called, You spirits who live in different springs, get the jars which Dumlawi must pay as a marriage price for Tepilasan. The spirits did as they were commanded, and when they had brought the jars and had filled the spirit house nine times, a pony bull and Ion said to the parents of Dapilasan, I think that now we have paid the price for your daughter. But Dalonagan, the mother of Dapilasan, was not satisfied and said, No, there is still more to pay. Very well, replied a pony bull and Ion. Tell us what it is and we will pay it. Then Dalonagan called a pet spider and said, You, big spider, go all around the town, and as you go, spin a thread on which a pony bull and Ion must string golden beads. So the spider spun the thread, and Napoleon Bull and Ion again called to the spirits of the springs, and they brought golden beads which they hung on the thread. Then Delona Gun hung on the thread, and when it did not break, she declared that the debt was all paid. After this the people feasted and made merry, and when at last they departed for home, Dumalawi refused to go with his parents, but remained with his wife in the town he had created. The End In the first story, I really liked the talk of growing sugarcane and how Apony Talao used his magic. I felt bad for Apony Bull and Ion because the stars snatched her husband. Kidnapping is not a good way to start a relationship. And in the second story, I really liked the discussion of wedding rites along with the alligator that ignored Apony Talao. I love reading all these stories with Apony Talao and Apony Bull and Ion. Granted, it took me a minute to get my mouth to pronounce them, but they are wonderful characters from these folk tales. And the podcast shout out is to Nuzzle House. Glenn and Gertie Nuzzles team up to make supernatural romance stories with very strange outcomes. Glenn also does his solo thing of reading public domain books just like I do. His selection is different from mine, so I won't be hurt if you go and get hooked on their podcast as well. And if you like his show as much as I do, go and give them a rating, a listen, and a review. And my listener shout-out is to Davao, being 2% of my listeners from the Philippines. The city of Davao has a cool etymology, which, you know, has my attention. Three groups from the Bagobo ethnic group had slightly different names for the river that flows through the city. The three names were Dava, Dawao, and Dabo. So they combined them all together to make Davao. The Davao region is on the southeast side of the southern island of Mindanao. The major languages of the area are Cebuano, Tagalog, and English. So in Cebuano, I say, Salamat ok mayong gabi. Thank you and good night.